And so we symbolize a factorial with an exclamation point. And that is a product of all positive integers less than or equal to n. So if we do five factorial, it's all the positive integers less than n or equal to. So we start at five and then four, three, two, one. We multiply all of those together. That's five factorial. Three factorial is three times two times one. Okay, so we're gonna be using these factorials to calculate combinations. And so we use combinations to find the number of possibilities when order does not matter. Okay, so that's the big difference. So if you watch the, the videos already, combinations is when order does not matter. And so I always kind of remember combinations that has the O, so order does not matter. And then permutations is when the order does matter. So the formula we use when calculating a combination is we do the total factorial divided by the number that you choose factorial times how many are left. Okay, so let's look at an example. So Emma has eight markers and selects two markers. The order doesn't matter. It, which one she picks first has, it, it makes no difference. So she's just picking two markers versus what you'll see in like permutations is say there's a soccer team and they're picking their um, captain and then they're picking their co-captain. So the order matters. It's different if you're the captain versus if you're selected for the co-captain. So that's when order matters. And so here picking two markers, you pick this, you pick the green marker first and then you pick the purple marker. It doesn't make a difference if you swap that and you pick the purple marker and then you pick the green marker. So that's why this is a combination. So she has eight markers and she's selecting two markers. So the total markers we have is eight. So we're gonna do eight factorial on the top. How many is she choosing? She's choosing two markers. So we do two factorial. And then we have to multiply that by how many markers are left. She picks two markers. She's gonna have six markers left. So we do six factorial. Any questions how I got eight factorial divided by two factorial times six factorial? Okay, so then now we just have to expand. So eight factorial, that's eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. Divided by two factorial, so that's two times one and six factorial, six times five times four times three times two times one. So all of these are ones that we can cancel out. And so then we're left with seven times eight, which is 56 divided by two times one, which is two. And so there are 28 different ways that she could select two markers.
Okay, any questions so far on the notes for combinations? Okay, so then let's go to our workbook. You guys are almost done with geometry. This is our last unit. She is excited. Yes, I would be excited too. I hated geometry when I was in high school. It was my least favorite math class. I like algebra a lot better. I'm just not good at math in general. <laughs> I don't like any of my classes. I, just, like, I wasn't good at math until I got into homeschool. <laughs> I'm never good at math, even in homeschool. I know what math stands for. What is that, Jose? Mental abuse to humans. Oh, yeah. I think I've heard of that before. Yeah. Not too far off. Yeah. Okay. So this is on page 58 in your workbook. All right, so a teacher is going to select three students from a group of 10 who do not have to take that day's quiz. How many ways can the teacher select the three students? Does order matter? Why or why not? So if I'm going to pick three of you that don't have to do the checkpoint today, does it matter if I pick Jose, Jasmine, and Rick? Or if I pick Jasmine, Jose, Rick? The it does, it's the same, right? Those three, regardless, don't have to take the quiz. So it doesn't matter who I pick first. Uh, I just ran over from doing stuff. I have you in my headphones. And so I was like trying to get some stuff done this morning so I can knock off some things. Oh yeah, you're fine. Um, no, I was just using you as an example. There's nothing you have to answer. Oh, okay. You just heard your name. I was just using your name. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, only, I'm only listening for like my name. <laughs> so no, I'm like I'm like, clean, I'm like cleaning up the house because I'm not because I'm like home alone and I'm trying to get some stuff done. Yep, you're good. <laughs> All right. So the order doesn't matter, right? Because if if I pick Jose first, or if I pick Jose la as as the first student that doesn't have to quiz, or as the third student that has to quiz, it doesn't matter. Regardless, he doesn't have to quiz. So we're gonna say no. Order does not matter. So if we do Jose and then Jasmine and then Rick versus, um, we'll put Rick first, Rick, then Jose, then Jasmine. It does not make a difference. Wait. Right, those have, three still don't have to take the test or the quiz. So we gotta put their name physically, like their actual name on the paper. Or are, uh, you, or are you just writing that down? Well, if you already copied the notes how I did it in the in the video, that's fine. I didn't put names, I just put student you know, one, two, three versus three, two, one. Doesn't make a difference. So then, um, uh-huh. Uh, my finger, I kind of sprained it. So if I take a little bit longer, that's my bad. Okay, don't worry okay. about it. You're fine. And if you need me to just send you it after, um, I can do that too. Okay, yeah, that works. Or you can take a picture too. If yeah, you, I'll just um, do that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So here's just an example. So there, you, we're using the same formula. So there's 10 students. So we do 10 factorial. We're picking three students that don't have to um, take the quiz that day. So that's three factorial. And then if we pick three, there's seven students left. So that's seven factorial. So then we just expand 10 factorial, then three factorial, then seven factorial. And then these all cancel out. And so we're left with 10 times nine times eight on the top divided by three times two times one. We multiply that out and there are 120 different ways. If there were 10 students here that I could pick three students.
Okay, so any questions on the example? Okay, let's do number one then. So Allie has five friends for her birthday. She can take two of her friends with her to Disneyland. How many combinations of friends can she bring? So we'll just use our formula. So the total, there are five friends. So we're gonna take five factorial. She's taking two of her friends. So that's how many she's choosing is two factorial. And then how many friends are left? That would be three factorial. Really dividing up the friendship here. <laughs> <laughs> Causing some drama, yep. Okay, so then five factorial, five times four times three times two times one. Now we just have to expand, find our ones and simplify. Two factorial would just be two times one and then three factorial, three times two times one. Any questions so far? Did they okay. friendship end it or? <laughs> um, yeah, they can't, they can't be friends anymore. The three that she didn't pick. Dang, this was like team deathmatch. No <laughs> she must be choosing very wisely. <laughs> five times four is 20 divided by two times one, which is two. So 20 divided by two is 10. So does order matter? No, because I used the names Jane and Jack. If she picks Jane and Jack to go, it's the same as Jack and Jane going. doesn't matter who she picks first. If she picks Jane first and then Jack, or if she picks Jack and then Jane, they both get to go to Disneyland. So it doesn't matter. Okay. So I'm gonna have you guys try some. So let's have, um, how many do we have? Are there, we have, people so that's perfect okay so Elijah and Jade go ahead and do number two and then Jaden and Jasmine number three and then Jose and Rick number four wait uh quick question how did yep. you get two times one uh, just expanding two factorial oh so okay so it's just that number and any number smaller than it that you multiply so for two factorial, it's just two and one. Okay. Yeah, and as you guys are working, just ask me any questions and then we'll go over them. I'll just give you a quick minute. <laughs> so Jasmine, um, just number three, which I think you already have it done. But just in case your partner needs help when we go over it. Wait, so on the last question, how did you get um, three or five over two times three? I think. Uh, so you put the total uh -huh. and then you divide it by the number that you choose. So she was choosing two friends to go to Disneyland. So that's why we put two factorial. Okay. And then times how many are left that didn't get to go, that didn't get chosen. So if they're choosing two, then three would be left. Okay, I get it then. So these two numbers should always add to your total on top. Okay. Good question. So yeah, I'll leave this here. So use this formula. It's in your notes too, to go ahead and calculate it.
Um, Miss Moore. Yes. Uh, what do we do if we divide the answer, but we get like, uh, like um. You're getting a fraction or a decimal. Yeah, like a decimal. Hmm. Which number is that? Um, I'm doing number four right now. Number four. Okay, we'll look at it when we get to it. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's go ahead and start going over this. So Elijah and Jade, what did you get for your, um, when you plugged in? What did you write? Uh, I wrote five over 10 and three. I could be wrong, but I'm 100% sure. So the total on top was five? Yeah, let's hold on. Oh, yeah. So wait, wait, wait. So I would just put five again, huh? So how many total players are there? Ten. Ten. So we'd want to put the ten on top. Yep. Oh, I did this wrong. Never mind. <laughs> no problem. So the, yeah, that's just how many total there are that you have to choose from. So there's, uh, it says how many ways can five starting players be selected from a basketball team of ten? So our total is ten. And then we divide that by how many are we choosing? Five. We're choosing five. So that would be five factorial. And then times how many are left? Five. And five. then five would be left if they're picking five. Good. And then we'll just expand. So we have 10 times nine times eight times seven times six times five, four, three, two, one. Five, four. Three, two, one. That's five factorial. And then we have to expand five factorial again. Five, four, three, two, one. So all of these can be crossed off. And then let's see, four and two would cancel out eight. And then three and then nine would become a three. And then we can multiply. That makes it a little bit smaller. Um, nine, or you could, not confused. Oh, okay. Then just, you could have just left it how it was as a calculator and done it all in the calculator. Okay, I did that. That's fine. So you would just do 10 times nine times eight times seven times six divided by five times four times three times two times one. I was gonna try to do it without a calculator but it's still really big numbers to do it in our head. Is, um, do you want me to tell you or? Yes, tell me, what did you get? <laughs> I'll save it sometime. Uh, 30,240. 30,240? Yeah. Wow, that's a lot of ways. Okay, good, thank you. And then does order matter, why or why not? We'll just say no, because we already explained. We understand that if we pick them in a different order it doesn't matter they all get to start and play wait no that's not like simplified I thought I was going to tell you the fraction oh then, divided by okay I was, I was like yeah that's a big number okay so 30 and then 40 on the top 120 on the bottom divided by 120 okay and it would equal 252 252 okay perfect sounds about right <laughs> Okay, and then for number three, was that Jaden and Jasmine? So Jaden, you had it set up. So what did you put for the total on top? I uh, put eight on top. Good, so eight factorial divided by, how many were they choosing? Three. So three factorial and how many are left? Five. Good, and then we expand. And really, you know that this is going to be five factorial. We could save ourselves some writing if we want, because we're going to divide it by three factorial and five factorial. So you could just leave it like that if you don't want to do all the expanding. So then those will cancel each other out. And then, Jaden, what did you get when you multiplied eight times seven times six? Uh, I got 336. OK. And then divided by three times two times one, which is six. And then uh, the answer will be 56. And then there's 56 different ways to select them. Perfect.
Thank you, Jaden. And then the last one, Jose. Let's see what you did. So, and see if we get a decimal. It could, it's possible. So, how many total were there? Sorry, I was in the other room. Oh. Um, so, it was a total of five. Good. So, five factorial divided by how many are they choosing? Uh, three. So, three factorial. And then, how many are left? Two. Okay. Okay. So, we have five times four times three times two times one, three factorial and then two factorial. Okay, so those cancel out and then the threes would cancel out. So we get five times I four. I went wrong. Oh, perfect, okay. So we are left with five times four on the top, which is 20 divided by two times one, just two on the bottom. So there'd be 10 different ways to pick three liters from a group of five. Three different combinations and we know the order does not matter. Okay, for the sake of time, since I know some of you already copied the notes, is it okay if you guys just take a picture of the notes? Um, and then I'll just kind of quickly explain them because it's already 1030 and I want to get through. We're just, we're still in last week's. That's fine. Is that okay? Good. Okay. So let me change what I'm sharing. I have to share my notes page. Last week on Tuesday, I really woke up, got on my computer. It was like waiting for like an hour and I completely forgot that you weren't here. Oh, sorry, Jose. I, I was like, why is she letting me in? <laughs> I was like sitting here and I was like really about to call you. I was like, oh wait, she's on vacation. <laughs> no, yeah, I did the same thing. I'm like, sure, was, I like, thought I was the only one waiting. I was like, all right. <laughs> it was probably like, I was like 10 58 and I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm supposed to get on a call. And then I get on the call and it says waiting for this host to start the meeting. I was like, why? And then 15 <laughs> minutes go by. I'm like, oh, I forgot she's on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I know. I was like, I, I was tempted. I was like, should I still just do the meetings? But then I was like, we went so far. We were up in Tahoe. So like, I was like, I, I, we had never been there before. I was like, I don't want to be like stuck to a schedule. Like, so yeah, that's why we're. Yeah, I I, uh, I woke up late and I was like, and I was like trying to get in the meeting because I woke up around like ten and I was still trying to like get up and get in the meeting before I'm able to do anything else. Just so and I, I and I'm like sitting there, I'm trying to get in and, and I'm texting Jane. I'm like, are you able to get in? She's like, you know, he she canceled it. <laughs> I, I didn't even I didn't even dare check my email yet. I just went to straight to the meeting because I knew if I was so late, then I would. Yeah, the day was like I was just waiting in the meeting. I'm like, wait. <laughs> you on vacation. You guys are funny. Okay. Um, do you, did you guys all, were you able to screenshot or take a picture of the notes really quick? You're... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let me just explain them really quick. Okay. So permutations we use to find the number of possibilities when order matters. So, and then the formula is we do the total factorial divided by the total minus the amount of that you are choosing factorial. So we'll see right here. So say there are 10 people in pilot school, one person will be selected as pilot and one as co-pilot. See, it's different. Those two rankings are different. One gets to be the pilot, one gets to be the co-pilot. So the order matters, whether you get picked as a pilot and a co-pilot say, Jose's the pilot and Jade's the co-pilot. It's different if Jade's the pilot and Jose's the co-pilot if you switch it. So there's going to be a lot more options this way. I'm the captain though. <laughs> so then how many different ways can these positions be filled? So we just plug it in. <laughs> we write the total, which is 10 factorial because there's 10 people. And then we have 10 people and we're choosing two. 
So we do 10 minus two, which is eight factorial. And so then we um, expand and we cross off our ones and then whatever we're left with, we multiply, which is just the 10 and the nine. And so there's 90 different ways that we can select a pilot and a copilot. <laughs> Instead of doing all of this work, you can also just say the number of people you can pick to be a pilot. So first we pick the pilot, there's 10 people to choose from. Then the number of people left to pick to be co-pilot would be nine people. So we could also just do it that way. So 10 times nine means there's 90 different ways we can select a pilot and a co-pilot. So this one goes quicker. Wait, there's 90 ways? Wait, wait. Yep. What's the 90 ways? <laughs> Because it could be Jose and Jade, but then it could switch, right? And then it could be Jade and Jose, or it could be Jose and Rick, or it could be Rick and then Jose, right? Because each one you can switch the opposite way too. Because they aren't the same. same. Oh, they aren't really the same not. kind of like. Because um, they the same. different positions. Yeah. So, so the thing is, like, how come I can't be the captain of the ship? You I'm could be. Captain. So it could be Jaden could be the pilot, and then Rick could yeah, be the pilot. Jose. I'm you know what? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter who it is because none of us know how to fly. <laughs> what do you mean? I've been playing GTA lately. <laughs> okay, so let me switch back to here. And so permutations. This is page 60. So we have six friends are waiting to ride the bumper cards. If only one drive and one passenger can ride at a time. Oh, this is supposed to be driver. How many different ways can the friends ride together? So to calculate the permutation, instead of having to use that whole formula, we could, or we could just say, the number of friends to pick to be the driver, there are six, times the number of friends to pick to be the passenger, five. That means there's 30 different ways. Do you guys want me to show you how to do it with the formula too? Just for fun. So we could also do six factorial and then six minus two factorial. That would be six times five times four times three times two times one. And then six minus two, that's four factorial. So four times three times two times one. So you still end up with just six times five. So it's okay if I like just answered all of them with that, right? Yep. With that. Okay. That's the way I'm going to do it because why work harder if you don't have to? Okay. So, how is this different from before when we um, calculated combinations? The order matters. So, being the driver versus being the passenger is different. No one wants to be the passenger, right? Everyone wants to be the driver on the bumper cars. Oh, he was talking about bumper cars. Oh yeah, I'm definitely not the passenger. <sighs> That's no fun, you wanna be the driver. Rick, I'm hitting you off. <laughs> Nah, go karts are way better. Actually, yeah, that's true. They actually are way better. I have one in my garage. How do you? Uh... Okay, so then, how many ways can the basketball team of ten girls select a captain and a co-captain? So we'll just do this. So captain, and then co-captain. So how many are there to choose from to be captain? 10. And then if we pick our captain, then how many are left to choose to be our co-captain? There's nine left. So 10 times nine means there are 90 different ways. And so does order matter? Yes, captain is different from being co-captain. Everyone wants to be captain, not co-captain. 
down there in the bottom of the closet where you can't see. Any questions on number one? Yes, uh, who won? <laughs> who, who gets to be co-captain from our team, our geometry team? Oh, oh no, I, I, uh, I meant the example, never mind. <laughs> Miss Moore's okay. the captain. <laughs> so. so for number two, there are eight soccer teams left in the World Cup. First, second, and third places will be given to the top three teams. How many ways can the eight teams place? So we have first place, and then second, and then third. So how many teams are there for first? Anyone? Eight. Eight. So then how many are there for second? Seven. Seven, and then how many for third? Six. Six. All right, so we multiply eight times seven times six. And so 336 different ways. Does order matter? Yes. First is different from third place. First is different from third place or from second or third place. So do you guys see the difference between when order matters versus when it doesn't matter? So when they give you specifics like first, second, and third or captain and co-captain. When there's a position involved. Yes, exactly. You, that's it. Good, Jose. So then number three, how many ways can ASB select a president, vice president, and secretary from a group of five people? So we have, oops, president, and then vice president, and then secretary. So there's five people. So we would have five for president, and then four to choose from for vice president, and three to choose from for secretary. Five times four is 20, 20 times three is 60. Yes, president is different from vice president or secretary. Okay, so then how many ways can five people sit in a movie theater? So we have the first seat, the second seat, the third seat, the fourth seat, and the fifth seat. So we have how many people for the first seat are possible? Five. Five. And then for the second seat? Four, three, two, one. Yep. So five times four is 20, 20 times three is 60, 60 times two is 120. So there'd be 120 different ways. Okay, and then we have specific positions. So we have a pitcher, a catcher, a pitcher, a catcher, a shortstop, and an outfielder from a baseball team of 11. So for the pitcher, we have how many? 11. Yep. And then for the catcher? 10. And then shortstop? 9. Yep. And then the outfielder would be 8. So let's see. We have 11 times 10 times 9 times 8, which is 7,920. Wow, big boy words. <laughs> And then the last one, number of ways to select a captain and a co-captain from a cheerleading squad of 12. So we have 12 for captain and 11 for co-captain. We 
which is 132 different ways. Okay, do you guys want to do the checkpoint together or are we ready to move on to this week's stuff? The checkpoint uh, last week? Yes, there was a checkpoint last Friday on combinations and permutations. Oh yeah, I already did that. Okay. Um, so then let's just, we can just jump to probability for this week then. So we know probability is how likely an event is to occur. Oops. So to calculate probability, we take the number of favorable outcomes And we divide that by the number of total outcomes. So let's say I have a bag with three white marbles. Three green marbles. and four yellow marbles. What is the probability of randomly selecting So we'll do a white marble. green marble and a yellow marble. Okay, I'll give you a minute to finish copying that down and then we'll go over it. Okay, so uh, picking a white marble. So the number of favorable outcomes is 
how many white marbles are there that we can actually pick? So the bag had three white marbles. So the probability of picking a white marble would be three out of the number of total outcomes. So there were three white marbles, three green marbles, and four yellow marbles. So altogether, three plus three plus four, there are 10 marbles total. So um, three out of 10 times, you should pick a white marble. I marble. <laughs> and then for the green marble, how many green marbles are there? There's three green marbles and there's still 10 total. So picking a green, the probability would be three out of 10 or 30%. You have a 30% chance of picking a green marble, a 30% chance of picking a white marble, a yellow marble. There are more yellow marbles. There are four out of the 10. So it's more likely that you're gonna pick a yellow marble because there's four um, in there. So you have a 40% chance of picking a yellow marble. Okay, any questions on the notes? Okay, go ahead and flip to page 62 in your workbook. Is it like the same problem or are we talking about more marbles? It's still marbles, there's just different. So this bag contains three green, four blue, three yellow, and two red. So suppose you pick one marble at random, find the probability and write it as a fraction and as a decimal. So the probability of picking a yellow, well, how many yellow marbles are there? Isn't it three out of three? 12? There's three, oh. yep. And then Elijah calculated how many total there are. There's three plus four plus three plus two, which is 12. Okay. Yep, very good. So three out of 12, and then to write it as a decimal, that's, that's one fourth, so it'd be 0.25. You could also use your calculator. And then the probability of picking the green, what would the probability of picking green be? Three. Yep, three out of, out, of 12. out of 12, very good, which would also be a 0.25. And the probability of picking a red, Two out of 12? Two out of 12, good. Which is, let's see what two out of 12 is as a decimal. 0.17. So now what would the probability be of not picking a yellow? So the probability of picking yellow would be three out of 12. What would be the probability of not picking a yellow? Any guesses? Wouldn't it be nine? Yeah, exactly. So there's nine that aren't yellow. So that would be nine out of 12, since three of them are yellow. Good. So then the probability of picking green was three out of 12. So then the probability of not picking a green would be? Nine. What was that? Did someone say it? Sorry. Wouldn't it be nine again? Yep. Nope. It would be nine again. So let's see. That would be 0.75 and 0.75. And then the probability of not selecting a red. So the probability of picking a red was two. So then, yep, it would be 10 out of 12, which would be 0.83. So what would the probabil probability be of picking a yellow or a green? So the probability of picking a yellow is three, the probability of picking a green, so that you would pick a yellow or a green would be six out of 12. 
because there's three yellows and three greens. So that's how we got the six. And then there's still the total of 12 marbles. So you have a 50% chance, 0.5. And then the probability of picking blue or red. So red, we already said there were two. And blue, there are four. So two and four, then that means there are six that are blue or red. So it'd be six out of 12, which is also 0.5. Wait, you said blue or red? Oh, wait, no, 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 never mind, never mind. I looked at it. I'm looking at it wrong. Wait, no, yeah, you underlined yellow. Oh, I think that was just from earlier. So there's four blue and then there's two red. Oh, yeah, I was tripping. Oh my gosh, I'm looking at this all wrong. <laughs> no problem. Okay, and then probability, they love to talk about marbles and about a die or dice. However, um, so a die is rolled, what is the probability of getting a three? So on a dice, you could get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six, just on a standard one. So the probability of getting a three, there's one three out of, there's six different sides. So the values you can get are one, two, three, four, five, or six. So then the probability of getting a number greater than four. So it doesn't say it can be equal to four. So four is not an option. So the only numbers greater than four on a dice are five and six. So five and six, there's two out of the six. The probability of getting a seven, a standard die only goes up to six. So it would be zero, you can't, it's impossible. Wow, I really got tricked on that one. <laughs> you fell for it. I really started writing one down. <laughs> Dang, that's slow, bro. I and then getting an even <laughs> and then getting an even or odd number. Well, even would be one, three, and five, and then odd number would be two, four, six. So that would be hey, hey. I, I think, think you got mixed up. <laughs> I, I think you got it mixed up. You should, because isn't it even two, four, six, eight? And sorry, did I see it backwards? Yes, sorry. Two, four, six for even, and then odd would be one, three, five. Sorry. Did I say that backwards? Yeah. <laughs> so even, two, four, six. Well, all of the numbers on the dice are even, even, are even or odd. So 100%, you're gonna end up with an even number or an odd number, six out of six times. Okay, any questions on this assignment? Okay, moving along, we're almost there. Our last notes and assignment. We should be out of here soon. Did everyone get this? Okay, now we're gonna do probability with or. So the probability of A or B. Oops. So we can just put in parentheses, the probability of A or B equals the probability of A happening plus the probability of B happening. So we're gonna use our same bag that we used before. So we have a bag with three white marbles, three green marbles, and four yellow marbles.
Okay, so now we're going to find the probability of selecting a white or yellow marble, a green or white marble, and a yellow or a green marble. So the probability of a white or a yellow mar white or yellow. So we'll do the probability of white or yellow. We do the probability of a white marble plus the probability of a yellow marble. And so we can actually use, we already wrote down our probabilities over here. <clears throat> So the probability of a white marble was three out of 10, plus the probability of selecting a yellow marble, which was four out of 10. And so remember when you add fractions, as long as they have a common denominator, which we do, we just add the tops together, the numerator. So three plus four is seven. So it'd be seven out of 10. Or a 70% chance of picking a white or a yellow marble. The probability of picking a green or white marble would be the probability of picking a green plus the probability of picking a white. So picking a green marble is three out of 10, plus picking a white marble, the probability, which is three out of 10. So again, we have a common denominator, so we could just add the numerators, the three plus three, which is six over 10. Six out of 10, that's a 60% chance of picking a green or a white marble. Can you zoom in a little bit more? Yes. Thank you. So just know when I'm getting the probability of the green and the probability of the white, it's coming from this page that we just did. So then the probability of a yellow or a green marble yellow or green, we add the probability of picking a yellow and the probability of picking a green. So yellow on the previous page, we said is four out of 10, plus the probability of picking a green, which is three out of 10. So four plus three is seven, so seven out of 10. So you have a 70% chance of picking a yellow or a green marble. All right, any questions on the notes? All right, let's go to our workbook and we're gonna be on page 63. Okay, marble is randomly selected from a bag containing two blue, five black, and three white marbles. Find the probability that it is blue or black. So the probability that it is blue or black. So we'll have to write out blue since they're both Bs. Probability of blue plus we're gonna add the probability of picking a black marble. So the probability of picking a blue, there are two blues. 
So it's going to be 2 over the total, which we have 2 plus 5 is 7 plus 3 white. So there's 10 marbles total. So the probability of picking a blue is 2 out of 10, plus the probability of picking a black, which there are 5 black marbles out of the total of 10. And so 2 out of 10 plus 5 out of 10 equals 7 out of 10 or there's a 70% chance that you would pick a blue or a black marble. So to see how likely one thing or another thing is, you're going to add their probabilities. Okay, number one, a die is tossed, find the following probability. So again, the options on a die are one, two, three, four, five, or six. So find the following probabilities of getting a four or a six. So we have to do the probability of getting a four plus the probability of getting a six. So I'm getting a four, there's only one of those out of one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm getting a six, there's only one of those out of six. So it'd be two out of six. Which is, let's see. You have a 33% chance. Okay, the probability of getting a three or an even number. So to find the probability of getting a three plus the probability of picking an even number. So can someone tell me what's the probability of getting a three? One out of six. Good, thank you, Jasmine. And then can someone tell me the probability of picking an even or of rolling an even number? Uh, three out of six. Yep, thank you. So then of getting a three or a six, we add them. So one plus three is four. It's four out of six, which is a 66% chance. Okay, and then the probability of getting a two or a number greater than four. Probability of greater, greater than four. That's less than, greater than four. So the probability of picking a two is what? Can someone tell me? Or of rolling a two? One out of six. One out of six. And then the probability of getting a number greater than four. Two out of six. Two out of six, very good. Thank you, Jose. And so we add one and two, we get three out of six, which is a 50% chance. Okay, a package of Starbursts contains three orange, four yellow, two pink, and one red. If one Starburst is randomly selected, find the probability that it is pink or red. So probability of pink or the probability of it being red. So we have to add those probabilities. So that what's the probability of it being pink? Anyone? Two, um, uh, hold on. Okay. 10, two out of 10. Yep, very good. Thank you, Jasmine. We add that to the probability of it being red. And what's the probability that it'll be red? One out of 10. Yep, thank you, Jade. We add those, so it would be three out of 10, which is a 30% chance. the probability that it'll be orange or pink. 
So we already said the probability of it being pink was two out of 10. What's the probability of it being orange? Three out of 10. Three out of 10. Okay, good. So we add those, which means it would be five out of 10. So 50% chance that it'll be orange or pink. And then yellow or red. So what's the probability that it'll be yellow? Four out of 10. Four out of 10. And then we said the probability of being red was one out of 10. So we add those and we get five out of 10 or 50%. So now what would be the probability of not selecting yellow or red? So we said the probability of selecting yellow or red was five out of 10. So the probability of not selecting yellow or red. Any guesses? Five. Yep, Five. exactly. So if you're not selecting yellow or red, you're selecting orange or pink, right? which there's a 50% because half of them are yellow or red. So the other half are not yellow or red. Someone have a question? No, it was frozen for a second and it oh. wasn't moving and then everything just appeared. <laughs> okay, sorry. Oh, okay, let's flip to the back. Um, I have another class to go to. Feel free to go. We're almost done. We're just going to finish this back and then you guys only have to do your checkpoint from last week if you didn't do it and then your checkpoint from this week. So we're pretty much all caught up. Okay, so in a class containing 15 students, three are left handed and two are glasses. What is the probability that a teacher will select a student who is left handed or wearing glasses? So we have to add those two probabilities. So the probability that they are left handed plus the probability that they wear glasses. So what's the probability that they are left-handed? Uh, three. Yeah. Very good. And then what's the probability that they have glasses? Two out of 15. Very good. Thank you, Jaden. So we add those up and we get five out of 15 which is one third, which is 33%. The boys varsity soccer team consists of three freshmen, four sophomores, five juniors, and seven seniors. If a player is randomly selected, find the probability that he is a freshman. So what's the probability that he's a freshman? Three over three out of nineteen. Funny, there are nineteen. Good. What about that? He's a sophomore. Four out of nineteen. Very good. What? What's the probability that he is not a junior? Uh. Shoot. Uh. <laughs> Fourteen out of nineteen. Yep. Yeah. And what about that he is not a senior? Uh, 12 out of 19? Yep, that's right. Very good. So then what's the probability that they are a freshman or a junior? So we have to add those probably that they are freshmen plus the probability that they are a junior. Isn't so it eight out of, go ahead. Isn't it eight out of 19? Possibly you're too fast for me. Yeah. So freshman would be three out of 19. And then the probability that they were a junior was five out of 19. And so yes, eight out of 19. And let's see, eight out of 19 is a 42% chance. 
the probability that they are a sophomore or a senior? 11 out of 19. Okay. Which is 11 out of 19, a 58% chance. Okay, so the probability that they are not a sophomore or a junior. Nine out of 19. Nine out of 19. So that means they are a um, nine out of 19, which is 47%. And then that they are not a freshman or a senior. 10 out of 19. How are you doing these so fast? Quick brain. <laughs> Just built different. Okay, and then the bottom ones look like it's reviewing um, permutations and combinations. So how many ways can six cars be parked in a row? So we have six cars, one, two, three, four, five, six cars. So the first spot there, how many cars can go in the first spot? Six, so then how many are left for the second spot? Five, then four, then three, then two, then one. Let's see. Six times five is 30. 30 times four is 120. 120 times three is 360. 360 times two is 720. I think that is the correct math. How did you do that in your brain? <laughs> well, check your calculator. It doesn't mean it's right. Six times five is 30. 30 times four. I just did three times four, which is 12 and added the zero. And then, so that's 120. And then I did the same thing. 12 times three is 36. And then I added the zero. So 360 and then 36. I just keep taking away the zero. Then 36 times two is 72. And then I add the zero again. So well, there is a 720 way to park. Yep. To park six cars. That's crazy, huh? Jeez. <laughs> All right, how many ways can three shirts be selected from a closet with 12? So now it could be a permutation or a combination. So does order matter if you're picking three shirts from a closet? No, because there's nope. 12. Exactly, it doesn't matter. So then we would wanna use our um, formula. So we write the total, since this is a combination, there are 12 shirts divided by how many we're picking so how many are we picking? Three. So that's times three, or divided by three factorial. And then how many are left? Nine. And then we just have to simplify. So 12 times 11 times 10 times, and then let's just write nine factorial since we're gonna be dividing by nine factorial. We already know those are gonna cancel out. So we'll just do three factorial, three times two times one. And then our nine factorials cancel out. Then we'll use our calculators for this. 12 times 11 times 10. So we get 1320 on top, divided by three times two times one, which is six on the bottom. So there'd be 220 different ways to pick three shirts from a closet of 12. I just grabbed the cleanest one. <laughs> okay. Seven friends are going to the movies. They decide to sit in the front row because two of them have to sit on the end of the aisle to leave early. How many ways can these friends sit to watch the movie? Well, should be like in the hundreds. So does the order matter? No. Yeah, it does. Yeah, because two of them have to sit on the end. Oh, right. Oh. So I know it's tricky. So then we would just want to multiply how many can sit on the um, end.
there's seven, so we would have seven, right? And then the other, the other five would sit just wherever. Yes, so we have on um, one on the end and then another one had to sit on the end, right? So the first end times the second end, so there would just be 42 different ways that they can sit to watch the movie. There's not like a hundred or something. What's that? I thought it was gonna be like a hundred or something. <laughs> and then the last one, how many ways can eight teams place first, second, and third in a basketball tournament? So does the order matter? No. If you're if you're gonna be first, second, and third, it doesn't matter if you're first place oh, or if you get third yeah. place. Yeah, it does. It does, right? So then, for yeah, first, first, we can have eight teams, and then second, there'd be seven teams, and then for third, there would be six teams. So we multiply that. So 336 ways. That's it. Not too bad. It's 1123. Do you guys want to do the checkpoints or you guys just want to do those on your own? I think we got it. I got it on my own. Okay. All right, so you guys are free to go. That's it, you're all caught up. So just make sure to upload your assignments from last week and this week, and then do the checkpoint. I think it's 10.1 from last Friday, and then this Friday will be checkpoint 10.2. Okay. If you want to stand, if you have any other questions, feel free to stand and I can help you too. All right, have a good day. Thank you, you too. Bye. Bye.